And joining me now with more on the Biden administration's still forming foreign policy is political analyst, American foreign policy expert, and professor at the State University of New York Maritime College, Mark Meirowitz. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Now, my first question is, you know, what is Biden's team trying to do uh, with Iran, specifically with the rehiring of Obama-era negotiators? Well, I mean, uh, it, is it going to be a Obama second, a third term, or is it going to be something effective? Uh, look, uh, I understand where Israel is on this issue. It's a very tricky line to uh, pursue. But I was going to use the analogy of the elephant in the room. The elephant is actually in the room, and we can see the elephant, and it's Iran and its nuclear program. And Iran doesn't really, it's not very shy in saying that it's actually going again to make a nuclear program exactly where we were before the last nuclear agreement where Iran said, we're ready to make a nuclear weapon, so you better make a deal with us. They're doing the same strategy. I think the United States has to, has to really step forward and not accept that. Where I see a different trajectory here is the uh, confirmation hearings of Anthony Blinken in his press conference. And what we're hearing from the administration is that they are actually at least outwardly focusing on the other issues, which did not get sufficient attention, well, yeah, which uh, Secretary of State Pompeo spoke about. And that was ballistic missiles, support of terrorism, and all these other factors. In order to make a successful deal, those factors have to be wrapped into the deal as well. If we're just going to do the same thing again with Iran, it's going to be a failure. By the way, I think Israel has to walk a very fine line. I don't think we want to have a repeat of the leader of Israel coming to Congress and making a speech against to the Congress against the nuclear deal in Washington, D.C. That was a very, I think, controversial move. And, you know, at the end of the day, the uh, United States went ahead with the deal anyway. Um, I think at this point, Israel's made its point. It showed its, the information to the world about Iran's nuclear program. And at this point, what we need is bipartisan support in the Senate and the House of Representatives for if a deal has to be made, it has to be a rational deal well, and but, not but, an ineffective deal that doesn't have verification. But so with all that said, now you just mentioned, of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu's famous uh, uh, visit to Congress and speech to Congress ahead of the Iran nuclear deal. That's right. Uh, yes. You know, so with that in mind, then, do you think that Israelis are right or wrong in expressing Israel's position, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as Mossad chief uh, Yossi Cohen said before, Iran and the United States even really talk? Or, you know, is Israel right in presenting its own interests and saying, you know, this is our red line, you guys take it or leave it? Look, the relationship between Israel and the United States is rock solid. It's bipartisan. Uh, there's no problem in Israel expressing its opinion, particularly to its friends in the United States. That's where, that's where the main leverage is going to be. Uh, Biden knows Israel. He's been a friend of Israel. But remember where Biden is after defeating Trump. He's in a, a rubber band that's pulling between the left and the right. The left is pushing him to the Iran deal. The left is pushing him uh, to make uh, better relations with the Palestinian Authority. The left is pushing him in all sorts of directions against Saudi Arabia on human rights uh, and so forth. So he has to walk a very fine line as well. So what you don't want is overpressure on the part of the United States, because that could really backfire, I well, think. So, so, so I think making the point is right. good, making the argument is good, but, but joining with your friends in the United States to make those points, particularly in the Senate. And there are so, lots of those friends so, there. So the flip side of that, though, is you know having the United States, as our friend, speaking to Israel about this issue. And so far, it's, it's been suggested that Biden has not yet spoken to Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, and historically, th th it's a little weird to wait this long to make that call. Mm -hmm. Is this a snub from the Biden administration, or is Biden just really busy? I think not, because uh, I think now, first of all, Israel is in the midst of its, uh, I guess, election season. And sometimes uh, American presidents don't want to interfere in that. But I think that right now, is it Biden busy? Yes, Biden is busy with the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten issue, which is the pandemic and the economy. He's got to set that straight. He's got to fix that because foreign policy begins at home. If he can't fix that, then all bets are off with everything else. All other policies 
are dwarf in comparison to clearing this. And right now, the administration is having a very hard time working up a COVID pa a relief package, uh, figuring out how to get vaccines to the whole population of the United States. They're working on that. They've got to do that. Uh, and they cannot focus necessarily and particularly on creating um, let us say, uh, zones of conflict in the world. So with Iran, and I think also what they're doing in other regions, except with respect to China and Russia, which is a little bit stronger, but if you listen to Jen Psaki, the president's spokesperson, she talks about strategic patience. So right now on foreign policy, I think the United States is working for stability and calm. No, no conflicts uh, moving along in that area, but focusing, number one, on the COVID uh, issue and the economy. Because if you can't fix that, then the other things are just going to be, uh, not going to be soluble either. So I think on this issue, uh, I don't know that there's any harm uh, in trying to talk to the Iranians, although they made it very clear that they are not interested in doing anything but the same deal again. I mean, this is, you know, again, we would call that, that's kind of nerve of the Iranians that they do that and they get away with it and they shouldn't get away with it. And there should be bipartisan support for a, not a normalization, but for a verifiable deal with Iran. The last deal was not verifiable at all. If they want to do a deal, do a deal, but not a deal that is completely, has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. I'm sorry to use the analogy, but on verification, that deal was not very effective. And it uh, needs to cover those other aspects or else it has no efficacy. All right, Mark Marowitz, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.